Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America in the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries, and we have today with us Reverend Albert Ramirez. But before I have Brother Albert share, I want you to do what I always ask you to do. Take that <laughs> phone that you have and underneath this image there is a share option if you're on a computer there's also that option can you please share that right now press that share button and uh, whether you are uh, watching us live right now or you will watch us later please share this broadcast it helps to disseminate the word of God and prayer that is so much needed around the world so please do that and I want to welcome you who are watching us on Facebook on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Telegram, on Rumble, and on our webpage, wherever you are watching us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as together we pray for this nation, for your nation, and for needs of people around the world. Welcome, Brother Albert. Amen. Thank God that we're able to gather together. Well, it's important to be very thankful to God for all that he's done, all that he is doing, all that he's done, basically, because everything he's done is, it's done, everything he's done, he's accomplished everything already, so he's the beginning and the end, so very thankful, thankful for, for everything God has done in our lives, and also our ministry. Amen. And as we see the craziness around us, uh, uh, it, it's um, uh, the how important it is that we be reminded to focus on God, to focus on his word and be grounded in there so that we are not shaken like people in the world are being shaken by the awful news from one place, from another, terrible things happening. But God is a solid found is our solid foundation jesus christ is that solid rock and as brother albert just said he has done it he has accomplished it meaning christ with his death and resurrection what what he did on calvary he paid for the forgiveness of your and my sins he paid for your healing he paid for your deliverance we can be free in him even though there should there appears to be the opposite around us yet there is a freedom inside of our spirit that no demon no devil can take away amen well brother albert i'm going to get myself uh, uh, preaching here if i don't watch out so i better uh, uh, turn it back to you <laughs> well i just i just today i've just been really thoughtful about about being thankful to god you know god has done so much and he's done a lot a lot more than actually we're taking advantage of god has given us a lot of things, authority, dominion, power, the, the Holy Spirit to empower us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us. Uh, and he's, he's just done so much for us, and we forget to be thankful. And we also forget to be thankful, even in the midst of circumstances. Uh, the scriptures talk about being thankful even even in in, in dire circumstances and in, in problems and things that, that, that happen in our lives. It's important to be thankful. Thankful that God is causing us to be more than overcomers. Thankful that God has, has provided all things according to his riches and glory. Being thankful for everything. And I, we forget to be thankful for answered prayers. This is one of the things that we many times forget to thank God for. And and I believe I believe God uh, wants us to be thankful. I get, wants to hear, and just like any parent wants to hear a thing, their child be thankful for something they give you. Know, it's like a, you give a child a, a toy. You know, he says, "Okay, give me that." You know, and doesn't say thank you. Doesn't say anything. It's it's like a father uh, wanting his child to be thankful when he gives them something. I believe God's the same way, and probably more so uh, that God wants us to be thankful and uh, for all that He's done, all that He's provided. And I believe that I, and I, this is my personal conviction: is I believe that if we are thankful, if we are, if we uh, articulate that thankfulness to God in, through words and just praising and thanking Him, I believe that God will starts revealing more things to us, and not only more things, but more things start start being manifested in our lives by the Holy Spirit because of being thankful. Amen. That is so 
It's true. And we need to be more th thankful. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, Anita and I uh, recently uh, ministering in Mexico and, um, you know, and, and it occurs to us, and it's not just being in Mexico and other nations, we were in Cuba with you before that, and we were in Ukraine and in Poland. And, uh, you know, we, we say to each other, how uh, children in America, if they would come, maybe just spend a few days here uh, in one of these countries, and um, uh, I think they would be much more thankful for what they have here in America. So many people are just uh, not thankful enough. It's not just children. And how about the answers to prayer? How about the yes. healings? How about the miracles? Well, we see that even in the case of Jesus' ministry, there were the 10 lepers, but only one came back to thank him. What about the other nine? Were they not healed too? Well, only one came back, and but I believe that a thankful heart, I know that a thankful heart makes a huge difference. It changes our um, um uh, how even our body functions when we're angry and unthankful. I think that our body also has certain issues. When we just begin to be thankful, it changes so many things in us positively, even physically affects us, just having that attitude of thanksgiving. So thank you for reminding us of that, Brother Albert, because we're not thankful enough. No, we're not, you know, and, it, and I, I think that's very important to God, you know, being thankful. And, and I, I, it causes, like I said, a, like a parent, you can compare it somewhat to like a, a parent, a parent, you give a child something, the child is very thankful, it makes you want to give more to that child. And I believe it's the same way with God, you know, but we don't appreciate anything that God gives us, uh, you know, uh, what would cause God to cause, to want to give us more, you know, if we're not thankful for what he has provided, what he has done in our lives, which is one of the most important things we should be thankful for is our salvation. Number one, um, mm -hmm. thanking God for being born again, you know, being, uh, being part of his family, you know, being, having access to the throne of God through prayer and, and, and knowing that he hears us always, you know, you have examples in the scriptures and the gospel where Jesus uh, when he raised Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. And he said, he said, Lord, Father, I thank you that you hear, you know, that you hear me always, you know, and he was, before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he was being thankful to God, you know, as the son of God, you know, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, he was being thankful to God. And he says, I thank you, Father, that you hear me always. And then he called Lazarus forth. And I believe God's, God's power uh, God's love and God's God's will to give you give us more and manifest more to us and through us if we're thankful if we're thankful for what He has already given us. Amen. And I I can't help but remember uh, the story that our friend Tony Abram uh, sometimes shares when he was a little boy and uh, he'd come up to his dad. I mean, his dad would uh, you know he'd meet his dad coming home from work and his dad would. Uh, give him a nickel or something, uh, five cents, he'd go and, and buy himself an ice cream. Well, he can't buy an ice cream for five cents anymore, but back in the day, okay. And, and, you know, one day his dad had a tough day at work. He came home, he wasn't very happy, and uh, he just didn't give him his five cents. <laughs> and uh, But but Brother Tony, just uh, being a little boy, we came up to his dad and started feeling his muscles. He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, Dad, you're so strong. You've got such big mu muscles. And, 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 and just started speaking these positive things to his dad. Before he knew it, his dad reaches in his pocket. Instead of a nickel, gave him a quarter. Instead of five cents, gave him 25 cents. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, you know, it's not that we have to uh, try to convince God to do something. God loves us. He cares for us and he has provided so much for us, but we do need to be thankful. We are definitely not thankful enough for all that he's done in our lives. And we can be thankful in all circumstances, uh, not necessarily 
necessarily for the circumstance that we're in, but in all circumstances, we can have that attitude of thanksgiving and praise. And, and, and we need to remind ourselves what Paul wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he adds, and again, I say rejoice, just emphasizing that. And here's a man who's not, uh, who's, who's been arrested by Rome, held uh, um, as a prisoner, and yet in the midst of, in that condition, he could still say, rejoice in the Lord, be thankful, uh, be thankful. Uh, I mean, that is not easy. It's not like somebody that's uh, got, uh, got a brand new car and, and everything's going great. Oh, yes, I'm going to thank God. Here he is in prison, and yet he's saying rejoice in the Lord. You see, our joy does not come from things. It comes from God. It comes from our relationship with him. And uh, uh and it's so important that cannot be taken away. Amen. I mean, you know, being uh, being thankful in all things, you know, the scripture tells us, I mean, even the bad things, because number one, in the bad things, if you're born again, if you belong to the family of God, you're going to get God's response. If you pray, if you ask your father, just like a child, if he asks his father for something, if he's in trouble or something, the father's going to help him. Your heavenly father is going to help you. He hears all your prayers. You know, he hears the cries that we give out unto him. So, you know, that, that's why we're thankful in all things. In, in the dire circumstances, in the troubled, troublous times that come, we can be thankful knowing that God hears our prayers. Just like Jesus said, he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me always because he always hears us. Because he was the son of God, God heard him always. Because we are sons of God. God always hears us, and God, and 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 we we should be thankful for that. That God hears us, and not be troubled to the point in a, in a hard circumstance, to the point where where we just give up hope. But but we have more than hope. We have confidence that God hears us always, always. He hears every prayer of ours, in spite of what what some people might think or what the devil might try to lie to your mind and cause you to doubt God. God always hears your prayers, especially especially when you're in dire circumstances. You just think about Paul, you know, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the things that he went through. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he talks about things that he went through. He was thrown in the ocean. He was stoned to death. He was he was put in stocks day and night. You know, he was beaten. Uh, I mean, those are, those are things that affect the flesh. And I hear, I've heard some theologians say, well, Paul had some kind of disease. That's, that's garbage. I don't care how educated they are, theologians or what, but that's not what he was talking about when he says that, that he asked God to remove these things. What he was asking God to remove from him is all the beatings, all the, you know, it'd be a whole lot better to preach the gospel without being beaten, without being stoned to death, whipped. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier to preach the gospel, let me tell you, without having any of those things. So that's what he was talking. Those were his thorns in the flesh, not a sickness or disease. That's, I can't believe they, the theologians would think that that's what he was talking about. It's those things that are definitely, if you're freezing in ocean water for day and night in the water, come on, your, your flesh is going to you're going to feel it. If you get whipped in the, you know, with 49 minus one stripes in your back, you're going to feel it. If you get stoned to death, you're going to feel it. So, I mean, th those were his thorns in the flesh and he asked God to remove them from him. And then God said, my grace is sufficient for you. See, this is the confidence that we have to be thankful for is that God's grace is sufficient for all of us, even in the dire circumstances to where we can say, Father, I thank you that you're getting me out. of." This is how we should pray in when we're in a dark circumstance, say, Lord, I thank you that this war is going to be over. I thank you that it will be over and all things are working together for good for me and my family or for those that are the believers that are in my country or whatever, because you love us, because you hear us always, you know, and we can be thankful for that. We can be confident that God has heard us and that all things will uh, work out for good. So we, we need to have that confidence and that kind of an attitude in the midst of a circumstance and believing that God has heard us and he's getting us out of that circumstance 
or he's teaching us something through that circumstance and through a test or a trial, like the scripture says, that our faith gets tested and tried. But he's teach, he'll teach us and he'll teach us to exercise our authority, our dominion over the circumstance to get out of it, because we do have authority and dominion to be able to overcome these circumstances with our own faith and with our own uh, with, with the power of the Holy Spirit and our own faith and the word of God, the promises of God. But we also have God to pray, to petition, to ask, to get us out of these types of circumstances, and the Lord will get us out of them. That's the confidence that we have. That's 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 why in all things we can be thankful to God that we know that he hears us. Well, God does not leave us because uh, we are uh, in a difficult circumstances at a particular moment. And that is, again, uh, the devil tries to get us to get our focus from God, our, our, our attention from God, and focus on the problem. Uh, whether you are on the mountaintop or in the valley— God is with you. If you are a believer, you put your trust in him. Now, the devil will try to lie to you and say, hey, he's not uh, concerned about you. You're on your own. But that cannot be further from the truth. God is with you in the moment of, uh, of great blessing in your life and prosperity. And God is with you when you're going through those difficult moments. And yes, I I agree that I believe that Paul, his thorn in the flesh was not a physical ailment as some people try to do because Christ paid for a healing. People were healed through his ministry. Uh, I believe it was that torment that he received from those constant persecutions wherever he went. Absolutely. And I think it's got something to do with his prior life, prior to him becoming a believer. He was a persecutor of the church. And so it then befell on him. What he sowed, he was reaping and to some extent, you could say. Um, and, and not that God could not remove that, but that was the one thing that uh, I guess the Lord allowed to keep him in check, perhaps keep him reminded of where he had come from, and to be thankful for the grace and mercy and love of God that God had saved him. He said he was the worst of sinners. In what way? I mean, he was the persecutor of the church, yet religiously, he was way up there. I mean, he had studied on the, under the greatest of rabbis of that time. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, meaning, I mean, he just had had that uh, everything, the law down to the T as far as fulfilling it. And yet he was a sinner because a person who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior Though they may have a religious, even a religious position, if they do not repent, if they are not born again, they are just a sinner. And uh, we remember the uh, when Jesus ta uh, talked to some Pharisees, and they were saying to him, well, our father is Abraham. God, and Jesus says, no, your father is Satan. What? How can Jesus say that? to religious leaders in the Jewish faith. Well, he said that to them because even though physically Abraham had been their um, great-great-grandfather, but spiritually speaking, they were not walking according by faith as Abraham had done, and they were not born again. And, and remember Nicodemus, he came to Jesus. And Jesus says, you must be born again. Now, he was a leader, again, <clears throat> amongst the Jewish people, yet he did not understand the new birth. And the new birth is what Christ offer us, offers us. And uh, so once you are born again, I mean, you have something that you have not earned, you have not paid for. It is by the grace of God that it was offered to us through Christ's suffering and through his sacrifice on the cross. But I mean, you know, every every uh, servant of God was always thankful to God. If you stop, if you look in the Old Testament, David, Moses, Abraham, they were all thankful to God for what he what he was doing through their lives. Uh, you know, and 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 like I said, Jesus Himself was thankful. Many things before he before he fed the four thousand, he was thankful. Then he fed five thousand again. He was thank he was thanking God. And it, and it just seemed to bring God on the scene 
And I and people forget, like you said, the things that he did, shall we do in greater things? You know, if we're going to do any of the things that he did or greater things, oh, we need to be thankful for what God is what God is doing for us. You know, uh, making a, a right confession like like Jesus did after being tested and tempted by the devil in Luke chapter four. I mean, he said, Father, uh, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. That's 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 making a, a positive confession of what god is doing in his life and we can make that same confession and be thankful for that you know i thank god for that you know and i i do make that confession that jesus made the same thing that he said uh you know in in luke uh, luke 4 18 so very important to be thankful i i thank god i get up i thank god i look outside i see a, a beautiful scenery i said lord i just i can go to the ocean that's why i love the ocean i said father thank you for this creation thank you for what you have created here the beauty of it you know the waves the things that we can for things that you provided for us that we can enjoy i praise you i thank you i turn on the water faucet i said lord thank you for water running water if you stop and think during the western days you know just a few hundred years ago they weren't able to turn the water on and let it run why just wash one spoon for a half for 10 minutes washing one spoon and the water's running, running, running. And you have all that clean water. And a lot of it's wasting. That's why I feel guilty sometimes turning it, leaving the water run too, too many times. But I'm thankful for just the little things. And I'm thankful above all, like I said, I'm thankful for my ministry. I'm thankful to God for his anointing on my life. Um, God's just been good. Amen. Well, we st- uh, you were talking about God's creation. Let's just take something simple like a seed. So I love mangoes. So I've been trying to eat a mango a day here during this season because they've been plentiful. So, um, but you know, it's got a huge seed. But there are other uh, fruits and vegetables that have got a different seed, much smaller. And yet, just think of how God created uh, plants with seeds. If we did not have seeds, and you ate that fruit and it's gone. There's no way to reproduce that, to have another plant. It's just the beauty of how God put the the whole process of seed uh, in trees, in plants, in uh, herbs, and how how things can get planted and transplanted, and life continues on, or even humanity. And so it is just amazing how God uses, how God established certain principles and certain uh, um, things in nature in order to have that. And you talk about water. Yes, running water. You don't have to go too far back. I remember as a kid in uh, Paraguay, we lived in the capital city, and yet I remember we did not have running water. This was in the capital city. I remember my mom would go to the well in the backyard, and she'd lower down the bucket into this deep hole. I'd peek down. I said, man, it's dark down there. What is it? One time, I think a snake came up on one of those uh, uh, buckets, you know, uh, but uh, at night. But, uh, but you know, you lower this bucket, bring it up, and you value, when you go through that process of lowering and raising and, 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 and turning that wheel to get that one bucket of water, you do appreciate that water a lot more. I remember being in Siberia one time. It was summertime in the far east of Russia, and it was hot, really hot. Obviously, no air conditioning there. They usually worry about heat there, not, not the. Uh, uh, I mean, about cold temperatures, not the hot temperatures. And so they, you see windows and homes and churches sometimes just literally glued up, and they'll just open one up for summer because they don't want to go through that process of gluing everything back up with tape is to not allow air to get in and um, but there was no running water except there was one pump in the middle between these high rises and the pastor and bishop of that area i think he lived like on the ninth floor 
And we get to his house, he says, oh yeah, you could take a, a bath. And I'm thinking, okay, they filled up their tub with some water so they have some water to use. And I'm gonna go use that. And then how's that water gonna get replaced? I said, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, I'm sweaty, I'm hot, but I'm not going to use up that precious uh, bit of water here on the ninth floor. <laughs> you know, no elevator, <laughs> no elevator. That's the other part. It's no elevator working so you've got you've got to walk up there and and get this water so sometimes we don't think about the smallest of things no. i remember that i believe it was an american company that uh, came in uh and and installed or helped install running water in the city of Asuncion, on the capital of paraguay and i still remember as a kid i could smell that water coming out of that faucet they put one faucet I guess in each yard. So we got one faucet. Man, that was really something being able to open a faucet and you got water. And what not only was it water, but it was drinking water. And speaking of that, that is why uh, in Ukraine, we've gone out of the way to help in several situations uh, for water um, extractions for wells to be put in so that drinking water could be available to some people that have been without drinking water. In some places, they have what they call technical water. In other words, it's not treated water. Uh, you could use it for maybe taking a bath, I don't know, uh, but they do it or washing maybe some things, but it's certainly not drinking water. And so we're trying to get this water to towns and villages that uh, don't have drinking water right now. It's very crucial. In some places they had wells uh, where they did not have running water. They had wells in some villages, but they got flooded. The wells got contaminated with dirty water, oil, whatever was flowing down during that flood. And now they can't use those. So, um, so the water is so crucial. And, and just going back, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but Brother Albert, you're saying that we need to be thankful and just opening that 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 faucet and getting water. I, I just remembered another situation. We were in um, in in Kenya, and this wasn't in a little remote village. This was in a city there, and yet uh, in the outskirts there, the, the missionary Natalia and her family they did not have running water, and so finally they got water. I mean, they had to carry water with big cans and stuff. It was just a whole process. And so uh, they got water, but it, it was only two times a week, I recall. But she was so thankful for those two days a week that she now had running water. She could fill up her cans and what have you. Didn't have to go carting this uh, heavy object that uh, you know uh, water is not light and so again being thankful for what god has blessed you with and how much more being thankful for salvation and for what god did for our eternal life brother albert back to you you know, you know also you have like in the 10th chapter of luke where um the disciples you know they they came back rejoicing because the lord gave them authority over and power over demons, demon spirits, you know, and he says, rejoice not that because they are, um, because the demons are subject unto you, he says, rejoice because your names are written in heaven, mm -hmm. you know, so, it, it, you know, in it, it, thankfulness to me, it seems like in everything that Jesus did, it was, he thanked God before the manifestation of mm -hmm. God's power and God's glory. I mm -hmm. believe that same thing happens with us when we're thankful before what happens, you know, like before a revival, we need to start thanking God for revival, start believing, trusting God that it's his will to, to have a revival and just be thankful for it and just start praising and thanking because praise goes along with thanksgiving. You know, it's 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 just praising and being thankful to God. And, and like I said, you see Jesus doing that but with his disciples. Uh, when when they did come back rejoicing, demons were subject. He says, "Father, I thank." He turned and said, "Father, I thank you that that you have not revealed this unto the wise and prudent, but unto babes." He they, he re gave revelation knowledge unto babes, unto uh, uh, baby Christians or or believers that just trust in God and and are thankful to God. So, I mean, 
uh, it's very important, I think, like I said, that before he fed the 4,000, 5,000, before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he was thankful to God, you know, and, and, and I, I believe that when we start thanking, if we're going to thank God, it's not just a, 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 a what's the word I want to use, it's not a, a system, it's, a, it's just being genuinely being thankful and trusting God trusting that he's you know that he's going to hear that he's heard you you know that he's heard your prayer you know that he's going to answer and he's going to answer according to his word so, so that's why it's so important to know his word is because we can know that god will answer us in whatever circumstance we're in god will answer us and even even uh even david when he committed sin afterwards he was thankful and you see david in the psalms he was very thankful to god even after uh after he sent with Bathsheba and killed Bathsheba's husband, he was still afterwards. He, he you know, he was, he, uh, he was. He, there were consequences, but afterwards, he was. He still was thankful to God in God's mercy and God's grace. Uh, he was very thankful to God even after uh, his sin that he committed. So, so I mean, thankfulness is very important to us as believers to, to be thankful to God, knowing that he hears, know that he's a just God to, to be thankful. That he's just that he's full of grace, full of love. We should be very thankful for that. Uh, and his mercy, uh, very, very thankful for his mercy. Um, and like I said, whenever, uh, in, in, in any circumstance, in all things, be thankful because we know and are confident that he hears us. We still belong to him just because we, we may have, we may be in a test or trial. It doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. It's God is still there and he's still listening and he's, and he will, we can be thankful that he's heard us. And as we petition him to get out of that circumstance, we can be confident that he will get us out of it. You know, in Habakkuk chapter three, verse uh, 17 says, though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vines, though the, uh, the yield of the olive should fail and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exalt in the Lord, uh, exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk on my high places. Um, so, and then it says, for the choir director on my string instruments. Well, here, what he what he's doing says, even in, when there is lack, even when there is a need, I will exalt God. I'm going to praise God. Basically, I begin to praise God before the breakthrough. So we want to praise God after the breakthrough. You know, you get testimonies and people will thank God and praise God after they already heard the testimony. Here, he's teaching us, the prophet Habakkuk is telling us that even when all of these things, there is lack, there is need. I mean, the worst of, uh, of cases, yet he says, I will exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. And he is the God, he, the Lord God is my strength. He has, and listen what he says, and he has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk in my high places. Basically, that's the result. If I begin to praise him, I begin to thank him, he is going to give me the breakthrough and I'm going to be like that uh, deer hopping around up in the mountains uh, rejoicing because God is my salvation. The Lord is my strength. So some of you are facing problems. Some of you are facing needs and, 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 and you're disappointed. It's hard in this moment, but let's do what the word of God says right here. Let's thank him. Let's praise him. And as we begin to praise him, as we begin to thank him, God goes to battle for us and those circumstances change. And he gives us those happy feet where we can be rejoicing, hopping around like that deer up in a mountain because God has done his work. But it starts with praising him before 
the breakthrough. And Brother Albert, let's do that right now. Let's stop and praise God and thank him. Would you lead us, uh, uh, Brother Albert? Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We enter your courts with praise, with thanksgiving. Lord, your word says that's how we should enter your presence, your courts. So we do, Lord, and we're able to come boldly before your throne of grace in your courts by the precious blood of Jesus. We are so thankful, Father, for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us, the things he sacrificed. We are so thankful for, Father, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for sacrificing your life, the things you suffered, the things you went through. And Lord, because of what you suffered, we're able to be healed. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, for also uh, the authority and the dominion you've given us through knowledge and revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit. Because of all your sacrifices, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that the, he gives us revelation, knowledge, and understanding of who we are in you. So we're thankful for that, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we thank you that we're able to take down principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, in our governments, Lord. In the, in, we're able to pray knowing that you hear us always for leaders, Lord, those that are in authority, so that all might be well for, with us. You said you said that in, in First Timothy chapter 2. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you and enter your courts with praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for our country, Lord, in Jesus' name, that, Lord, you've heard us. And we're thankful, Father, that you've heard us pray for our country. We're thankful, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you are doing and you're changing things, changing the hearts of people and leaders in the name of Jesus so that all might be well with your church your people called by your name. And we thank you, Father, for that authority and that dominion to be able to decree your judgments according to Psalm 149, that this the saints are able to decree your judgments on this earth. This, this privilege we have, it says in Psalm 149, to exercise our authority and dominion. We're thankful for that authority, thankful for that dominion, Lord. And we just give you praise and glory. And we pray that for our country. We're thankful for revival. We've asked, we've petitioned you, we've believed you. And we thank you, Lord, that you've heard us and that revival is happening. It's not going to happen. It is happening. Amen. Lord, in Jesus' name, it's little fire starting that's going to turn into a mighty flame around the world and this, in this country and around the world. And Father, we thank you for that. We just give you praise and glory and honor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, oh God. We give you all the praise, Lord. We thank you, Father, for for healing us through Christ Jesus, for what he's done, Lord. We thank you for healing those that need healing in their bodies, in their minds, Lord. We thank you, thankful, Lord, that you, according to uh, in Matthew, Lord, chapter 15, I think it's 36, where you, you, you heal all maimed people, people that needed new arms and legs, Lord Jesus. You came and you healed them, and you said that the things that you did shall we do in greater things. So we're thankful, Lord, that we can do the things that you did and greater things, Lord. We're thankful for those statements that you made, and they are statements of truth, statements of authority, and statements of power. So, Lord, we thank you for those statements. Your word, your word is statements of truth. Your word is, is the law of the universe, and we thank you. Thankful for your word, oh God, that does not return empty and avoid. We're thankful, Father, for the Holy Spirit, his help that he gives us, his his power, Lord, his revelation, his leading, his guidance, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and thanks, Father, for all that you do. We thank you for worldwide revival. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit in these last days, as you promised. We're thankful that you always watch over your word, and it doesn't return unto you empty. Therefore, Lord, as you said in Acts chapter 2, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh in these last days, and we're thankful for that, Father. We're thankful for that revival, Lord, and signs and wonders and miracles will take place, oh God, and healings in Jesus' name and salvations. We thank, we're thankful for all that you've done.
done, Father, in Jesus' name. We're thankful for turning leaders in different countries and communist countries around, Lord, saving them or removing them because you've released your judgments upon them. And Father, we just were thankful, Father, that you're turning those governments around, Father God, in your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We're just mm -hmm. thankful, Father, for your word. It reveals all these things to us, and we just give you praise and thanks, Father, for your holy word, for your Holy Spirit, for the blood of Jesus Christ, and for you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And I sense the Holy Spirit is just flowing, and the Holy Spirit is touching people in different nations of the world right now, just open up to God and say, thank you, Jesus. I receive your anointing. I receive your salvation. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. I thank you, Lord, for my breakthrough right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer to prayer. Amen. Yes. In Jesus' name, just thank him. Thank him for the answer. You've asked him. You've asked him more than once, but now just thank Thank him say thank you lord i believe that you have heard my prayers and i thank you for answering my prayers and i thank you for my healing my breakthrough in jesus name thank you for the salvation of that prodigal thank you for that breakthrough yes. thank you for that curse being broken over that marriage, over that life, over those finances, in yes. Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are healing, you are touching, yes. you are delivering people. Oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name. In Thank Jesus' God. name, I Thank believe that God has touched uh, people yeah. around the world. And don't forget to thank him. And let us know, too, so we can thank God together. It is an encouragement to us to hear of those testimonies. And we have been getting them. Sometimes people just don't tell us till they see us. Well, we don't get to see a lot of you very often. So just write us. Let us know what God has done in your life because I know that God has touched many of you. Uh, Brother Albert, there are needs around the world, and I've received some uh, some uh, inf some uh, videos and information from pastors in pa a pastor in Pakistan um, is showing churches being attacked and burned and 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 just uh, it seems like an uprising against churches. And I want us to pray for the nation of Pakistan. I would like us to pray for India because similar things have happened in parts of India. Uh, difficulties have happened also um, in Nepal, in places in Nepal. And sometimes we don't think of these things when we are living in a free nation like this. And we forget that in some parts of the world, there is severe persecution for being a believer. And I want us to pray for the persecuted Christians, not just in Pakistan, but in particular there, but also in other parts of the world. There are many being persecuted in places like China. Uh, and there's a level of persecution in many parts of the world. Let's lift up the persecuted church, Brother Albert. Amen. You know, you know, and, and, and again, being thankful for the authority and the power and the, the, of the Holy Spirit that we have that empowers the words that we speak, the prayers that we pray. We need to be thankful for that. And, and those who are going through these types of persecution, Paul was persecuted. You know, and he said, he says, through all the things, the, the persecutions, the necessities, everything that he was going through, he says, when he goes, I think, he says, I think I'm thankful in those because when I am weak, then I am strong. What now? So, some people might not understand that. Well, what what happens is when he's weak, then revelation comes, knowledge comes from the Holy Spirit because he is the grace, he is the power of God to get us out of circumstances. Also, and we get ourselves out of circumstances by faith, by faith pro proclamations, by speaking the word of God, the promises of God. You know, I don't believe it's God's will that we just get beaten, and tormented all the time. It's not. It's the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So it's we, we should be thankful 
that we have authority and dominion over all the power of the enemy and use that authority and dominion in the midst of that circumstance. This is another reason why we're, we're to be thankful, thanking God for that authority, that dominion over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what Luke 10, 19 says. So, I mean, I'm thankful for that verse, very thankful to God for that verse. And of course, for the authority and the dominion that God has given us. So, you know, the whole Psalm 8 talks about that over the works of God's hands. But also, but about authority and dominion over all the principalities and powers. These are what cause wars. These are what cause persecutions. These are what cause, causes death, the killing, and all of that stuff, the destruction of cities and things. So we need, we need to be thankful. And, and then if we're thankful, then we need to use that authority and that dominion that God has given us over these principalities and powers. And so, so Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the dominion and the authority that you've given us over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt us. And Lord, also those believers in Pakistan, those leader, those believers in India, those leaders, the believers in the Middle East, in the name of Jesus in China, in the name of Jesus, Lord, loosen revelation, knowledge, and understanding about their authority, their dominion to stand and be thankful for that authority and dominion, to release that authority and dominion on the enemy, to release your judgments on earth. Psalm 149, that to release your, your dominion and your, just, your ju justice and, and judgments on earth, Lord, to every saint you said you give this privilege in Psalm 149. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for that, to, to, for that, uh, that, that judgment and justice released on those causing the persecution, on those causing the, the, the persecution by, of, of torment, of beatings, Lord, and of even putting to death some Christians. We take authority over you, binding you principalities, powers in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you for the, the authority, the dominion to bind the powers and the principalities causing this persecution and destroying churches, they, we come, we forbid you and command you to stop in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and we loosen God's judgments and God's justice upon you in the name of Jesus, you principalities and you powers in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for that. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we pray for the nation of Ukraine. And Lord, we also thank you that you have heard our prayers, the prayers of saints in that nation and around the world. And we commend the principalities and rulers of darkness to be dethroned over that country and over that region. And we speak peace, and we speak restoration, and we speak prosperity, and uh, reunification of families that have been split. And Lord, we speak healing emotionally, spiritually, and physically yes. over Thank the people you. of that nation and that region in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Brother Albert, we pray for America on this program. Would you pray for America? Um, Go ahead. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for our country, Lord, in Jesus' name, as the spiritual authorities, which we are, every believer, as the spiritual authorities in this country, Lord, over the principalities and powers, trying to implement uh, uh, persecution, to, to, to remove the laws of the land, to change the laws of righteousness in this land. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we take authority binding every power principality, ruler of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places that is trying to manipulate or change the laws in this country, that spirit of lawlessness, we bind you, cast you out of our government, in a, uh, a federal, state, and, and, and city, and county governments, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we loosen righteousness, we loosen the law of the land, which is our constitution, it will not be changed, it will not be compromised, in the name of Jesus, Lord, it's a it's a law that uh, the Constitution is a law that was established by men of God that prayed and sought your face, and you gave them instructions for that Constitution. And Lord, it abides and it, it, it agrees with your word. So, Father, we thank you for this Constitution that will not, in the name of Jesus, be compromised or changed by any individual, by any principality, power, any demon 
inspired individual in our country in Jesus name. We bind you foul devils command you to shut up and cease and desist from trying to change our constitutions in the name of Jesus. And we just loosen your justice, your judgments, Lord, upon kings, you said in Psalm 149, upon kings and princes, Lord, we have authority. We can loosen your judgments upon them. So we do loosen and release your judgments and justice upon those that are yielding themselves to the principalities and powers, demonic principalities and powers that are trying to manipulate and change our government, trying to cause uh, of the destruction of this country and our government and, and then also other governments. Others will pray the same way for their governments in Jesus' name. You know what's 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 causing their governments, others that are praying for their own countries. Those of you that are watching, you know whether it's communism, take authority over that communist, cast it out, loosen righteousness, loosen good judgment, loosen good leaders in the name of Jesus that will yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And like leaders in our countries did, our forefathers did. So you can pray that for your country in Jesus' name to be for theocracies to be removed from the Middle East countries in the name of Jesus and for the righteousness of, of, of Christ to be released and, 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 and justice to be released in your countries in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for that. We decree these things. We declare these things. And we believe for revival in our country. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God and Father, we lift up the people of Maui and those that have loved ones there, those that have lost loved ones. We pray for the restoration of those yeah. families, those lives, those, those properties. We pray that you would help those uh, the responders that are searching for those that are missing. Give them success in quickly locating all that are missing. Father, yes. we pray for those that are mourning the loss of loved ones. Comfort them, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that resources be made available quickly to those in need and those that have suffered the most in this situation. We pray for the churches and those who are leading efforts um, to help the despondent, to help those in need in this hour. And Lord, uh, we pray that justice would also be served to any that have uh, in any way mishandled and done the, the harm to others. Yes. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this area would be rebuild quickly and that yes. Lord lives would be restored. And in the midst of this awful situation, we pray that out of these ashes, people that come to know you as a savior, many more will come to know you as yes. Lord and savior of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Yes. Well, we continue to pray uh, for the nations of the world. We continue to pray for you, for your needs. If you don't know Christ as your Savior yet, open your heart and just simply say, God, I know I cannot do it alone. I know I've gone astray. I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and make me a new creation in him and I will follow you with your help all the days of my life. Just pray that or a similar prayer. God will save you. Jesus will come into your life and you're going to be born again. So do that. And as you receive Christ in your life, talk to him every day. We call it prayer. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a conversation you have with God. And you can start out by saying, good morning, Lord Jesus, help me today. Each time you pray, you will develop more and more conversation with him. Let him talk to you. Yes, he does speak to our hearts, but primarily he speaks to us through his word, the Bible. And so read the Bible. If you don't have one, you could download one. It's so easy today. And a good place to start is the fourth book in the New Testament, the gospel according to St. John. Good place to start. The whole Bible is important, but this is a good place for you as a new believer to begin to get acquainted with Jesus and what he was teaching. And so please do that. Talk to others about Jesus and find a church a group of believers, wherever you're at, maybe there are not open churches, but there are some groups of believers meeting in hopes. 
to find them and begin to get together with them, to pray together. That way you'll be, you will grow stronger in your faith. Well, Brother Albert, our time has gone quickly. Any final thoughts uh, um, that you would like to share? Just always, I always want to remind people of how important the Word of God is. It's it's not just a book. It's not just a historical account of things that happened back to whenever they happened. It's, it's God's Word. It's the living Word of God. And it, God watches over it. Anything he says in that word that you and I can do, we can do. And, 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 and whatever that word sa says we are, then we are, you know, sons of God, for example. You know, so, you know, and we're able to do the things that Jesus said we're, con we're he's God the son. We, we're able to do the things the word says we're, we're, we're able to do. We're able to pray the way the word says we're able to pray. So, so, so we can't, can't overemphasize how important to memorize, but not only memorize, but to, uh, to, to act upon the word of God, to be a doer of that word, uh, start practicing the word. You may not, you may not get answers right away because your faith is growing, but as your faith grows in the word and, and confidence, you see God answer his word and watch over his word for you personally, then of course your knowledge will grow in the, in God and, and of God and also in who you are in Christ Jesus. So very important to, to get into the word of God and memorize as much as you can read as much as you can because the more you read the more your faith will grow the more you act upon it the more your faith will grow uh and also the more knowledge you'll have of who you are and you'll act like a different person amen and um if you've missed the first part of this broadcast as soon as it's over go back and watch it from the beginning a lot a lot of good things were shared and powerful prayers and remember, share this broadcast. It is a way of evangelism. It is a way of helping other people. And as we uh, continue ministering in the nations of the world, we want to let you know that you can participate in those efforts by going to our webpage, globalvisionministries.org, or by writing to our address, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 9576. Too. There are needs around the world. We have been emphasizing Ukraine, but we are also ministering in other nations. And there are needs that we would like to be able to help with. And we can, as you uh, contribute and as you put finances and resources in our hands. So thank you to all who support this ministry. May God recompense you. And if God is speaking to you right now to do something, for one of these uh, nations uh, like Ukraine or, uh, or Cuba or some other part of the world, please do that. Do not put it off. God richly bless you. Thank you, Brother Albert. And thank you to everyone who has joined us today. And remember, don't look at how big your problem or your need might appear. Put your eyes on Jesus. He is is much, much bigger than any need or problem you or I can face. And even in every trial, in every circumstance, in every difficulty, there is always a way out. There is always a hidden blessing that God wants to manifest. So open up to him, begin to thank him and praise him as Brother Albert was telling us today until you see that breakthrough, and you will see that breakthrough because God who has promised is faithful to fulfill his promises, to fulfill his word. So keep your head up, keep praising God, keep thanking God, and remember Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.